Carnivore diet's a stupid diet anyway, but I mean. <laughs> what a stupid f diet. Go on this diet, get explosive diarrhea, but hey, buy supplements. To what length are your pews and how often do you trim your nose hair? Have you ever heard of a hairy potato? Mark Belt is a, <laughs> is a discount Stan Efferding. How big is your eggplant since eating all this meat? It has, the best thing is the amount of support that this book has. <laughs> I wish I could see the comments. Mark Bell looks like a goblin. I just need to say this in the tonality of which I they're wonder, trying to put it across yeah, so you I'm understand. Really sure. And Seema's having too much fun. <laughs> we love it. Hey, I want your meanest, most disgusting, most vile from the crack of your asshole shit <laughs> to come onto this comment section because I'm ready, baby. Power Project family, this episode is brought to you by Piedmontese Beef. Now, we've been eating Piedmontese Beef for a very long time now, but the amazing thing about their steaks, and we like to call it diet steaks, is that number one, they have a lot of cuts that are very high fat, but they have a lot of cuts that are low fat. So if you're dieting and you're not eating a lot of fat, you can still enjoy some wonderful tasting steak. Andrew. Can you tell them how to get it? Yes, absolutely. You guys got to head over to Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com at checkout. Enter promo code POWERPROJECT for 25% off your entire order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Head over there right now. All right. We got some mean tweets about carnivore and it's World Carnivore Month, so I yeah. think we should read them. We should do it. Carnivore diet's a stupid diet anyway. But I mean, <laughs> how about we have the people tell us how dumb it is? I love the fact that people need science and they need proof that eating meat like has been a thing. Like I'm pretty sure that people ate meat in the past, and I'm pretty sure we probably relied on it pretty heavily. No, we ate rice, oh. whole wheat bread, and corn tortillas, beans, chicken and broccoli. Hmm. That was pretty much the diet. Damn. But I wish I lived back in those days. Yeah, me too. <laughs> they must have lived off of Pop Tarts and shit like that, right? Pop Tarts are great. All right. So what's, uh, let's just fire away here. This first guy says, What a stupid fucking diet. Go on this diet, get explosive diarrhea, but hey, buy supplements to prevent this as well. OMG. Well, what supplements would prevent diarrhea? Are there any out there that could? There are some like fiber supplements you might be able to buy. You might be able to have some luck with that. Okay. I don't know. And a lot of these people don't even shit each day. So, I mean, getting a little bit of diarrhea is probably good for you at some point, right? I mean, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I think that diarrhea is great. I mean, have, have you ever had somewhere to be or something to do? And if you tell somebody, you're like, hey, I got explosive diarrhea, then you're off the hook. You ain't got to go. <laughs> this morning, <laughs> yeah. I texted you guys, I'm yeah. late. That's my third shit of the morning. <laughs> yeah, see? So this guy, I mean, he needs to reframe the way that he thinks about diarrhea. Reinterpretations, what you always talk about on this podcast. I've been talking about it for a long time. Obviously, this guy hasn't been listening. <laughs> exactly. Is the next one negative too? We might as well read what that guy said. What did yeah. he say? Why are we doing this, LOL? I'm attracted to extreme myself but we just need to try and eat better guys hold ourselves accountable potatoes are great mm. he must be irish <laughs> you know how they had that potato famine i think so yeah and he's hungry for him yeah probably it's it's those irish people they love their potatoes like potatoes, potatoes are good though have you ever you the one who told me about the japanese purple ones. oh those are good i haven't had them but oh I've they're excellent they're they taste like candy have you ever heard of a hairy potato no, I haven't. <laughs> Is this like, are those? Okay, I'm just going to let you tell it. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife has been a swimmer for a very long time, right? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, people play tricks on each other in sports, you know, like in football, the locker room, you give each other wedgies and like all kinds of weird stuff happens, right? <laughs> in swimming, she said if you were swimming behind a guy, she said they would pull their suit over and you'd see their nuts. <laughs> Wait, and, they would do that to girls? Well, they would try to do it to each other, but sometimes like the order of like who's behind them got like mixed up. <laughs> and then a girl would be swimming along. Da, 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 da. <laughs> They'd be terrified. So. I knew it had to do with balls. Anyway, let's keep going. So I don't really like potatoes as much anymore. <laughs> that kind of ruined it for me. But maybe my wife does. I don't know. I still love potatoes. Ain't no Meat difference. causes diabetes. I I've heard that. that. I've heard someone say that before. Um, the math on it makes sense. I think Furman said that. Yeah, Joel that Furman. Could be misquoted, yeah. but yeah, our dog from Furman says Well, that when you things. overeat protein, it spikes up your insulin levels, right? <sighs> Drives it through the roof, and then your body, your, um, your body comes insulin resistant at that point, and then mm -hmm. you end up uh, losing your foot because you ate too much meat. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. Next, next uh, terrible thing here. Let's see. Veggies heal, 
Okay, bye. You know, she's kind of right. My mom, she used to give me garlic mm. whenever I was sick. Garlic's supposed to be good for the heart. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. So, you know, is garlic a veggie, though, or is it a root? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with vegetables, do you? I ain't got no beef with them. Uh, if they're on my plate, I'll eat them, but mm-hmm. I won't like... Oh, yeah, you don't really eat them hardly at all. I won't go out of my way to purchase it. Mm. Yeah, it's I a don't leaf, know. man. I don't know. The verdict's still out. Vegetables might be horrible for you. Who knows? You want to read this one? How big is your eggplant since eating all this meat? Um, I don't eat eggplants. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. What, I don't understand the question. Do you? How um, big is, let me read it again. How big is your, and there's like this giant purple eggplant. In there, ah, it's a zek. Since all it's you eat zek. is, and then it's a meat. It's a Zach. Mm. Well, I mean, if you guys really want to know, we've been using a penis pump recently. Oh, yeah. And that shit has given me a little bit of girth. Mm. Why don't you tell them how Went to get a discount? Went from two inches to three and a half pump. inches. So uh, I'm packing now. Damn, bro. People got to be intimidated. Hey, man. Walking around with this weapon. If you know what I'm saying. I, I, now I understand why you like to get naked all the time. All the time. Jeez. Half the time when I'm behind this table, I actually have my pants off. Hmm. But that's why I'm like, I stay over here. Today I have my pants on. Hey, did you know that if assless chaps had an ass, they would be pants? Did you know that? I know. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know why everyone always has to say assless, because that's what makes them chaps, is that they don't have an ass. Oh, yeah. Wait, so when what are chaps? Are chaps something? Chaps are just just assless. Yeah, they're just legless. They're just legs. They're just for your legs. It's like leathery stuff for just your legs, like you're riding a horse or something. People just want an excuse to say ass. And that sounds funny, assless chaps. Because it sounds funnier, assless chaps. I dig it. I dig it. Assless pants are chaps. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) Hey, this is cool. Anyway. I don't understand. All right. When people are sick and they go to the doctor, the doc literally says, avoid red meat. Meat is not good at all, man. Oh, man. Well, you know what? I don't think we should put a lot of steak in the doctors. I like that. Right? I like that. I mean, honestly, doc. okay, I love doctors, and they help a lot of people, but the medical field has been behind on a lot of, like, nutrition stuff. Yeah. And if we've learned anything from all the guests that we've had on, a lot of these studies, um, these epidemiological studies that demonize meat— one of the big problems is people are eating, first off, low-quality meat in conjunction with a lot of carbohydrates mm. and a lot of fat. And then people are like, it's the steak. Right. It's not that grass-fed ribeye. That's your problem, homie. It's not the grass-fed ribeye. It's probably rolling through McDonald's and having a lot of bad habits, not sleeping, and so on. Yeah. What do we got this next guy saying? People need to just relax. People, let me just read it the way he says it. People need just relax. My question to Mark Smelly Bell, can you ship some of that blood for me to drink? Gains. Fire gains. All you weak ass clowns asking for blood work, go lift some heavy, something heavy, and quit bugging this amazing dude. I think that's actually yeah. He's he's being cool to you. Yeah, we got. A, a he positive. wants to drink your blood though. Yeah, that's a little odd. You know, you have some wild fans, man. I think <laughs> I think there's a fan that made you a, a nipple page. Mm-hmm. Like just you're just your nipples. Was it just the nipples? Yeah. Right. And now you got people want to drink your blood. You could sell that shit though. Like, <laughs> I I, uh, I don't know what to think of that. You should you sell know? some of your undies one day. My undies? I swear you're going to make money. Well, you mean, not like you, just sell some of your undies and see what you can make from I it. could be rich. You could be very <laughs> rich. All right. <laughs> what length are your pews and how often do you trim your nose hair? Also, shave toe knuckles or no? You're probably not that age where you got to mess with your nose hair yet, huh? Not yet, nah. It's bizarre, dude. Are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I gotta like, I gotta trim it every once in a while, or sometimes I'm just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna pluck it out. And you pluck it out, and then it gives you like a little oh. tear. Cause you're like, oh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> and I mean, I know that your pubes, Andrew's pubes, and my pubes are all shaved down because mm-hmm. we've been using the penis pump. Yeah. And if you want good suction, you got to be pretty bare down yeah, there. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep it trimmed up. Gotta, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent true. Yeah, we're bald right now, baby. Naked mole rat. Let's go. I've been, uh, I've been, I've been weed whacking it for a long time. Baby. I mean, hey, look when you when you when you trim back the bushes, right? Like it goes, <laughs> <laughs> makes it look a little bigger, right? You're a little bit more well represented. That's actually facts, though. Like yeah. if you have too big of a bush mm-hmm. and like a you know a 
a tiny kid like me, right? Yeah, all your shit's covered up. It's like it's just a bush and a little mushroom tip coming out. But once you shave that down, you see a little bit more. Yeah, it's like, it, you know, it's like the guy like has been working out or something. Hello. Yeah, you're like, oh, Yo, hey, look at that. There is something there. Oh, the little God. guy gets to finally come out and play, I right? I love this. I, I like his username. I don't give fatness. I, I, is it IDG fatness? Mm. I, I don't get it. Okay, I thought I did. But something mm. fatness sounds good. Yeah. All right. Next tweet. No, this is. Oh, sorry. This yeah. What length one. are your pubes? Huh. <sighs> you want to read this one? Or you want me to take it? <laughs> Go for it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. This for most people is absolutely dumb. Why compromise your energy levels and lifting performance for no reason? Newsflash: Not eating carbs doesn't make you cool. Hmm. I think it does make you cool, yeah, kind first of. of all. And then secondly, uh, you know, people might have energy levels fluctuating. People might have a little bit of their performance dip, but it would only be because they lost a bunch of weight, which yeah. is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And then also your body will recalibrate when you lose some weight and you get used to it. Yeah. Right. And then and this happens on all diets, right? It does. Like what happened when you did bodybuilding? Like as, as you got closer and closer to the show, yeah. you weren't stronger and stronger and stronger, right? Nope. And were you- Weaker and weaker. You were eating carbs. Mm-hmm. Eating mm -hmm. like yeah. 250 grams of carbs even towards the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, low fat, high protein, and I was still feeling like shit because I was so lean. And you probably lost how much weight from the start to the finish? 265 to 225, so 40 pounds. Yeah, so anybody that's going to go on a diet that's trying to lose like a reasonable amount of weight, you're going to lose a little strength, and your energy is going to be a little bit weird. Your stomach might be a little rumbly. You might mm -hmm. have uh, some issues on the toilet. Everything's going to be new. But uh, the, one of the worst things I think that people can do is overeat. So it gets you, it can get you away from overeating. That's the whole point of the carnivore diet is that it's protein based, it's meat based. And when you eat a lot of protein, eat a lot of meat, eat things that are satiating, it'll keep you full for longer. Yep. You want me to start killing people at the mall? Mm. Yo, we got to answer this one real carefully because some of these motherfuckers are real. Like they're like, they really want to know. So let's not joke about this. No. Spool into leader. The answer is no. Yeah. Absolutely not. Don't please. want anybody killing anybody. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> okay, these are fun. LMAO, period, <laughs> fuck, period, no, period. I can't quit the carbs because you're weak. <laughs> <laughs> no way. All the carbs until Christmas. Damn, these people love carbs. Carbs yeah. are everywhere. Someone tagged, Dar I'm not even going to go there. To be honest, works at works out too expensive so it's too expensive mm. to just eat meat yeah well i think might might be cutting back on some other crap they're eating right yeah you know what if you want to really kind of tackle that go to the episode that we just did with your brother chris bell yeah because we heat chris and you y'all talked about it if you want to do carnivore on a budget mm -hmm. and which is very possible to eat meat on a budget but you can also type that shit into youtube you can watch our show i mean there's a lot of options or you can just be a bitch and keep complaining about it there's options out there for you people. That's all we're trying to give you. I'm not yeah. trying to I'm not trying to make anybody do anything. I've said this before. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I do sell stuff, but I'm not mm -hmm. trying to sell you anything when I talk about this diet. Uh, I'm just trying to share information that I think could be really helpful. And if you don't like it and you don't want to do it, you ain't got to. There we go. Trying not to lose loose <laughs> my gains. Mm. No thanks. Haha. Ha. Well, I mean, from that picture, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to go there. Hey, I've had people recently, you know what? It's just pathetic. I've had people recently telling me, they're like, yeah, I did the diet last year and I lost about 20 pounds, but I lost all my strength. Mm. And I was like, well, how long did you do the diet for? And they're like, well, you know, I did it for about two months, which is pretty good. Like that's a good amount of weight loss. Like that's really good progress yeah. there, you know? And then came the truth. Then they said, my squat went from like 295 down to 265. And I'm thinking in my head, I didn't say this because I am not completely ruthless. But I was like, that's a horrible fucking squat in the first place. What are you complaining about? <laughs> I mean, these are, these are these, let's just face it. These are piss poor weights in the first place. We have women in the gym. We've seen women in the gym. You, you can go on Instagram and you can watch women rep out 315 all day long. 400, 500. Yeah. Our girl, Steph, I think she did 265 for like a set of 15 or something. Other. I mean, it's just, I don't know what she weighs, 100 pounds, 120 pounds or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on now. 
uh, you know, I, I, I just ain't that strong anyway. The only reason I'm clowning on the strength though is because I just think it's like a misrepresentation. Like the guy was fat. You know what I mean? And it's like you lost body fat. You were addressing kind of the main issue, which is going to help make you probably feel a lot better about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I admire that. I dig that. But the second that this thing, your weight fell off a bit and you had some resistance from that, you're giving up on it. And don't give up on it. You might lose some strength, but you can come back. You will gain the strength back. You'll gain the strength back. You you can set PRs at lighter body weights. Exactly. Like that kind of was a PR for him. You lost 20 pounds, mm -hmm. but that's probably maybe the first time that you hit that squat at that lighter body weight. It's so a little bit of a start over. Reframe that and tell yourself, this is a PR at 20 pounds lighter. God. It's a big deal. Oh, God. I'm so glad someone called Mark Bell out for this shit. Dude got really weird and cocky. Since he started getting leaner, his ego is through the roof. Mark, you cocky <laughs> bastard. Drop the ego. Get humble. I do not know what this guy's talking about. You know, I, I think I've always been very, very humble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's bullshit. <laughs> nah, but it, you, you know, haven't been, you know, you're not you're not cocky. You just yeah. you, you know what you're doing, man. Yeah. And you're outspoken about it. That's not cocky. That's yeah. confidence. Reframe. Hmm. It's not yeah, cocky, I don't it's even. Confidence. I guess I don't even know what cocky means. I mean, if I'm speaking the truth, then you know, if I tell people yeah. what I got or what I worked for and how I earned it, what's wrong with that? I just realized. Why do we always bring it back to this? The word cocky, right? It usually means like, oh, you think you're the shit. Mm -hmm. But cock is in the word. And Ooh, oh. If you're calling someone cocky, oh yeah, I didn't even see that. Yeah, it's like, mm. it's like. You're pretty mm, you know, cocky is usually negative, but it's kind of like you're saying you got a big dick, Just right? Trying to stick it out there. Cocky people really do try to like, mm, you mm. know, assert themselves mm. in that way. So yeah. you're just saying you have a big penis. I don't know. I might have an ego or something. I don't know. <laughs> you did take a picture as Burt Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Pretty naked, pretty uh, much. Yeah. And you posted was, that on yeah. the internet like that was okay. That's because so. Andrew really wanted to take that photo. It's been a lifelong thing for him as a photographer. <laughs> and you did see Mark's, you did see his dick yeah, there, I didn't you? I, you saw I, a flash I, of his weenie. I definitely, it took me a little bit over 10 years to peak in my career and that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Oh, Mark Belt is a <laughs> is a discount Stan Efforting. Who's a discount Larry Wheels? Who's a discount? I'm a discount Larry Wheels. That's pretty good. Hey. A discount Ronnie Coleman. Uh, do I want to be the discount Larry? I have to be the, di I want to be the discount Ronnie because Larry's younger than me. See, now this, whoever this guy is, that's, that's funny. That's a good one. That's, that's a good really one. good. Yeah. I can live with that. I'll be the discount Ronnie Coleman and you're the discount Stan Efferding. Let's go. Send, we got to send this guy some free shit. Yeah. Awesome. Lord <laughs> Legender. Yeah. That was nice. But I love you, Larry. You know I do. Okay. <laughs> 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 it has the best thing is the amount of support that this book has. <laughs> I wish I could see the comments. Mark Bell looks like a goblin. <laughs> see, this is what the internet is for. The internet is not for people complaining or bitching or saying things that are dumb. The internet is for saying things that are very true. <laughs> Bro, you were Omni-Man this past Halloween. Be the Green Goblin this oh. coming Halloween. <laughs> that would be fucking perfect. My kids always say that. They're like, you're already Shrek. You might as well just paint yourself green. <laughs> I'm like, thanks a lot. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Sam, thank you for that, dude. Or lady. 554 likes. <laughs> well, this one didn't get any likes. This Encima is on steroids. Does that mean that there was a former Encima that wasn't? When did I start juicing? 16? Uh, 13. I think I was, no, I was 16. Mm. 16 or 17. You know, the, how long have you been eating the goat stuff? Oh, my life. All my yeah, life I've been eating too. the goat meat. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of steroids in there. But I hopped on when I was like 16, you know? Mm. I was really heavy. That was the first time I actually got a steroid accusation from my mm. friend Tyler Moltby, my soccer team. He's like, you're on steroids because I slide tackled him. And you had to look it up. You're like, I don't know yeah. what that means. I'm like, why am I so angry at you, Tyler? It was because of the roid rage. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes Joe has doctors on to talk about diet. Sometimes he has these guys. Oh, I get it. Mm. Oh, we shouldn't be talking about diet. Oh. That's why. You know what? Uh, I think I'll address that a little bit. I would have to say that the best people that we've had on and the best people I've seen and the best people that I, the people that I kind of place in the highest value when it comes to nutrition mm -hmm. 
they're not doctors. And if they are doctors, they're doctors of something different. They're not doc. They're not a doctor of like, they're not necessarily completely 100% in the nutrition sp space. Now there are people that are really good. You got Lane Norton and there's a whole host of other folks that are, that are really, really good at what they do. But I don't think Jeff Nippard is a doctor and he's oh. got great information. Um, I don't think uh, Dr. Sean Baker, I mean, he is a doctor, but he's not a doctor in that field. He did, mm -hmm. he worked on, he'd surgery on like elbows and stuff like that, whatever the heck that's called. Yeah. Orthopedic Tata, or something. Mike Mutzel. Like, yeah. A lot of these people aren't doctors. Joel Green, Ron Penna. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, uh, who was that guy that we had that was, uh, he was an engineer. Mm. Bickman. Oh, yeah. There's well, a lot of them are engineers. Yeah. Yeah, Bickman and one of the guys that studied cholesterol really deeply. The PE diet. Right. Another another engineer. Ted um, Neiman. Ted, Ted Neiman. Yep. Like, yeah. I mean, like, th when it comes to diet and nutrition, I don't really pay attention to doctors mm -hmm. anymore because, like, even the information and the advice that I've heard doctors give to my mother for her mm -hmm. nutrition, it's just, it, it's like... Like, no, that's actually going to make things worse for you, mom. You're mm -hmm. going to end up gaining more weight. So I just, I really, like, there are a lot that do maybe put out some good stuff, but honestly, that's not who I go for for nutrition advice these days anymore. A lot of the amateurs are going to learn in a completely different way. Um, Mike Isratel seems to be somebody that's real Ooh. deep into the science and has a great understanding of it, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you got to keep in mind, there's been great people over the over many, many centuries that have been amazing at a lot of things without necessarily having a degree in a particular field, you know, someone like Charles Darwin, I think he was just like taking pictures of birds and he stumbled upon his theories. I don't believe he was like a scientist. I think he was an amateur. Really? And it looked like he came across some like pretty good ideas. I don't know. I know that some of them have been proven to be like, not, you know, uh, not standing up to the test of time, but many of them have. So not a bad idea. Not a bad uh, go there by Charles Darwin. What's not? Oh God. Okay. That's getting a little small there. Mark Bell sells meat and debunks sized ba science based game science backed game changers movie. All right, let's restart this. Mm. Mark Bell sells meat and debunks science backed game changers movie. Mm. Then tells people they can get stronger and perform better without eating a proper diet. SMH. Shaking my head. I wonder what people think a proper diet is because honestly, uh, I think that you would primarily eat meat. And you would eat some vegetables and you would eat some fruit. And I think that that would be like, those are things that are pretty natty, pretty natural to this earth. Yeah. So I don't really know. I don't know what else people think that you should be eating. Y'all, y'all are kind of wild. Cause okay. I know we're talking about world carnivore month and we're talking about only eating meat, but we are not anti veggies. I eat veggies mm -hmm. when they're in front of me. Right. We just sort of like we eat some other stuff. We eat some other stuff. Yeah, but we we'll eat some processed food and shit like that here and there. But rarely. Yeah. Like the big the big aspect of what we talk about is like pretty much avoiding processed mm -hmm. foods, highly palatable processed foods that you'll tend to binge on, and eating real food. A lot of that being meat. Meat helps you build muscle, recover, et cetera. It's like if you eat quality foods, you're going to end up going towards a quality body. I think that we're just in we're America in general is just so fat. I think uh eighty percent of the population is like overweight. And I think yeah. that like uh something like sixty or seventy percent, I'm losing some of the numbers, are uh kind of labeled as obese. Thirty three percent are obese and then mm. like seventy five I was way off on that one. It's okay. It's like thirty three percent are obese, mm. but it's like seventy to seventy five percent are right. overweight. Right, right. So it's like and then also, we, you know, the definitions of that, I can agree that like those aren't always great because you and I could be considered to be obese. overweight, with, with obese, yeah, yeah. right? So some of that, whoa. <laughs> uh, my vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, in the studio and we think there's some sort of weed whacker going on out yeah. there or something or leaf blower or whatever the hell it is. Um, Let them pass a little bit. Yeah. Go away, leaf blower. don't realize how important that work we're doing here is that you think you can just blow leaves outside and uh, also let's not undersell how important it is to blow the leaves around <laughs> true you gotta like they're on the street you gotta blow them down this way and then the next day you gotta blow them down the other way that is blowing back and forth and leaf back blowing is really fun have you ever done it it's oddly satisfying yes sure. it is yeah. like getting them into a little pile and mm -hmm. until you gotta pick up that pile oh fuck that uh, so you gotta make your kids do that <clears throat> you gotta really us out there 
And of course, he's just going around in circles around the one car. <laughs> Got to get every leaf. What were we talking about? Eh, it doesn't matter. No. Um, I'll just go to the next one and see if I can read it. Okay. Get ready? Let's do it. Hmm? Carnivore denial. Even Sean Baker said athletes need carbs. I did carnivore for half a year for gut issues, but gained zero strength. Even got weaker. From Juhani Kutalani. Let's talk about that in a more serious way real yeah. quick because a carnivore diet is kind of set up so that you end up eating less, so that you can control your calories so that you lose weight. Remember, the only way to tell if you're in a caloric deficit is from the scale. The scale will give you feedback saying that you weighed less than you did a couple days ago or the day before. And that's how we register that you're in a caloric deficit. There obviously is you can lose some water weight, and that happens a lot with diets like this. Um, but no one is no one is really claiming or saying that this is the diet that's going to, you know, lead to, you know, you breaking world records and things like that. It's a diet to help you control what you probably lost control of at some point, which might be your nutrition. Um, and probably the reason why you might be seeking some of these things out or listening to some of the people that are sharing information about carnivore is because you're probably in search of something that will assist you to gain control as we talk about with fasting all the time to figure out a way to gain control of your diet when mm -hmm. you primarily eat meat or when you make yourself you kind of box yourself in like these are the rules like I can eat meat I can eat eggs I can have bone broth I can have salt and that's it once you kind of box yourself into that you go meal to meal to meal and you end up having less calories every day hopefully you have decent output but your output might be compromised a little bit because you do have less calories coming in but over time you'll be able to control your diet a little bit better you'll have the satisfaction the satiation of the protein and the fat and hopefully that continues to help you be in a little bit of a caloric deficit um, and that's the whole point and the whole premise of the diet. The diet is not necessarily geared towards um, you being some sort of savage in the gym, although we've seen people have, from time to time, have some amazing results, mainly only eating meat. Tools that we've talked about that will help you if you're pursuing a carnivore diet um, or a diet without any carbohydrates is electrolytes. Electrolytes are going to be necessary because you tend not to get as much of that when you do go on a low carb to carbless diet. But also, you guys got to remember as much as we talk about the carnivore diet and it is World Carnivore Month, diets have phases. Mark and myself and Andrew, we have different phases of which we eat. There are phases that we go into where we'll have a little bit more carbohydrates. Um, I'm going to that type of phase. Like you have those phases, right? But the carnivore diet is a good elimination diet, but it also helps you change your palate, helps you change your food habits. You're going to find that over time, um, you're not going to eat as much food. You're going to you're going to kind of get yourself learning how to go through the day without having to eat all the time. And then when you do right. reintroduce carbohydrates, you won't tend to binge on those carbohydrates because you'll have better food practices, you'll have better habits, and that's something it can help with on the back end. So we're not, there's no demonization of carbs here. Just don't fool yourself as an athlete into thinking that you need to eat 400 grams or 500 grams right. of carbs a day to perform. That is not necessary. Right, and if somebody was following the carnivore diet and they're like, I have a potato every day or I have a cup of rice every day. We'd be like, that sounds great. I'm not going to be like, you're that not on the, you're actually not carnivore. I'm not there are like some carnivores that do that shit though. Right. They're like, right. yeah, it's not carnivore. <laughs> Put that potato on veggies away. Like, okay, you shut the fuck up too. <laughs> sort of like Adam Sandler. <laughs> really? That was really good. A little bit. Oh, I like yeah. it. I got I to gotta re-listen to that and redo it some point. Mm. All right, cool. Honestly, why would anybody take nutritional advice from these guys? Mm. Why? And it's another Sam. I think Sam's tend to have something against us. I get a lot of people that ask questions. That's kind of how a lot of this stuff started in the first place. Um, mm. Years and years and years and years ago, I was uh, lifting. I got stronger and stronger. I posted stuff on the internet. And then all the comments weren't, hey, that squat was high, but most of them were. Uh, a lot of people asked, hey, how'd you get strong like that? How'd you get stronger? Like, what's the method you use? Why are you doing box squats? Why are you people asking legitimate questions? And I was trying to give them the best answers I could with my experience. So the only reason why I'm sharing information is 
A, because there's been some questions, and B, I'm just trying to share my experience. I don't really think that I know much of anything. <laughs> and no, that the, the, the whole reason we have the pod, uh, at least when I look at the podcast, the reason why I love this so much is we get to talk to so many different individuals who have so many different diets they follow or so many different habits and practices. And then we get to, get to cheat and use that for ourselves. Um, and I think one of the big reasons why someone would probably want to listen to you um, or myself or Andrew is because we've been able to get in shape. We've been able to maintain great shape for a long period of time, not just for a stint. Mm -hmm. And there are certain habits and things we do each day that for us, we don't even think about anymore. But these habits can probably help somebody in their life change their habits to get some of the similar results. That's and a big deal. And also, let's face it, like Stan Efferding and uh, Dr. Baker and Saladino, those guys are like robots, man. Like those guys are... They, they are like clockwork. Ron Penn is another guy that comes to mind. Oof. These people are like clockwork with their nutrition. And I know that you've played that game before. You've done that in bodybuilding. And mm -hmm. I, I did it with a small stint in bodybuilding as well. But I don't want to play that game. I don't want to be like that tight on everything Super all the time. And I yeah. think that might be another reason why um, some people are, are looking to us because I think, I, I believe our approach is at least a little bit more reasonable. The way I like, because neither of us track anymore. Right. Right. And we've been able to maintain good shape. Some people are going to say, yeah, right. <laughs> but outside of that, because that's not the point, um, we have habits that allow, like, I never feel like I'm dieting. Do you? No. This doesn't feel difficult, right? Nope. I don't go through each day having crazy cravings. I mean, I did have nine burrito tacos yesterday, but. <laughs> but, if, but if we do, we address them usually. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes will push them back a little bit. But sometimes it's like that sucker keeps coming back in and I'm like, all right, let's just go for it. I think the big goal of anybody who's going on a diet is to not is to first off get in shape, but then to build a lifestyle that allows them to maintain that shape for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Not that they're having to fucking pull out their phone and track on my fitness pal and make sure all these things fit in their macros every single day until the day they die. Most people would like to live with a freedom of not having to pay attention to every little thing and right. just know what's going on and have habits so that everything is automatic. That's many, what everyone's looking for. And how many people do we see? They, they do lose some body weight, they're successful with it, and then boom, they gain a lot of the weight back. So you want to try to find something that can fit you, something that will work well. And for us, it's been a meat-based diet. I don't know if you've actually ever gone like carnivore, carnivore, but I know you've had days where you had pretty low carb, right? Yeah, I've done carnivore for a while. I mean, I didn't, whenever I do carnivore, it's like, okay, nah, I don't need any carbs today. Right. So I, I'll have days each week where I don't have any carbs and I'll have other days it's where- It's a great way to utilize the diet. Exactly. It doesn't have to be like you do it every day and then now you're considered a carnivore and you get like a little badge yeah. at the end of the week. <laughs> I'm not dogmatic. With, uh, and not, like, even though you talk about carnivore so much, I don't think people realize how non-dogmatic you are with your diet practices because you'll have carbs here and there. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're never having carbs. You'll have carbs here and there. Yeah. But for of course, since it's World Carnivore Month, you're going to stick a little bit harder to pure carnivore this month than you typically do. But we have carbs, um, but we just know when to use them, when we need them. You know. Should we tell people about the pizza and the peanut butter cups, how they're synergistic and they help you burn a lot? Oh, 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 shit. I, I'm sorry, you, man. I didn't, I, never mind. Okay. Let's go so, to the next one. Okay. I'll, well, yeah, let's not worry about that. I, for, I, I, fuck, I fucked that up. I didn't, I, that's more your thing. I apologize. <sighs> well, the peanut butter, the post workout. No, 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 that's just not even. Okay. You know what I mean? We're not going to mess with it. They're not ready. I don't no, think they're ready. No. All right. This carnivore nonsense is going to give a lot of people heart disease and cancer. Oh, my God. SMH. Y'all people in your SMHs, like y'all, y'all be shaking your head so vigorously Man. from chosen two. One of the worst things I think that we can do as human beings is continue to overconsume energy and to be, uh, to be what I would consider and Tate Naaman would consider energy toxic. You just consume too much and you don't put out much. Never, not putting out is never a good thing. Can I get a hey now? <laughs> hey now. Um, and so like. The things that are going to lead to disease a lot of times is, you know, not moving around enough and overeating. Mm -hmm. A carnivore style diet, a keto style diet, a tracking your macros diet or whatever diet it is that you are, are on, even like something like Weight Watchers, they're all addressing the same thing. They're trying to figure out how you can have some sort of control over the amount of energy that you take in. Hopefully you can also uh, put out some energy as well. So that way uh, you're not just, you know, eating such a small amount of food every day. But, 
you know, to think that the carnivore diet is somehow dangerous or somehow something that's going to lead to any sort of real uh, major risk, I think, is a giant mistake. And, you know, heart disease and cancer, a lot of people that get, like, heart disease, I mean, a lot of people aren't generally active. They don't have good habits. And you won't, you won't see someone who's on a carnivore diet. If someone's taking a carnivore diet practice, right, um, or a vegan diet practice, as we've learned from Paul Saladino, that healthy user bias is a very, is a very real mm-hmm. thing. And that healthy user bias is generally people who choose to go yes. on a diet practice will also start picking up physical habits to uh, go in line with that. You're not going to see carnivores getting heart disease. Because if you're doing that, you're probably doing a lot of other things that are going to lead you towards a healthy place. Same thing if you go vegan. Right. Yeah, because that's that's what you're like gearing yourself towards. Mm-hmm. And once you're going towards that, you're going to end up with a result where you're healthier. What's the next one? Man, I'd love to have the convenience of shitting once a year, but I enjoy staying healthy just a little bit better. No, you're going to get diarrhea, bro. You're going to be shitting every day, multiple times a day. Shitting once a year? Yeah, I don't get. What does that, that mean? From Jason Genova. Oh, that's real. That's fake. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you, homie. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're gonna get so constipated from all the meat you eat that you're only gonna shit once a year. I had to switch toilets this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. My like bidet like battery like wore out. I Aww. guess. And I went to hit the button for the uh, spray. And so I had to do like the walk of shame with the pants around the ankles. Wait, you didn't have toilet paper? Wait, what happened? I did, but I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to the other bathroom that has the, has another bidet. You were so lazy <laughs> that you chose not to wipe your ass, oh, but yeah. to walk with your poopy butt cheeks oh, to yeah, another of bathroom. Course. <laughs> of course. And then I got it blasted all out of there by the bidet. <laughs> I don't see anything. Am I crazy? Am I losing my mind over hey, here? Hey, that's your home, man. You do what you want. You're the king of that, ca- Dude, king I don't of that know, castle. I don't know, man. It's easy, to, it's easy to judge. It's easy, easy to throw stones where you're at. <laughs> get my my bedayless ass. <laughs> I don't have a bidet. Get, get, into my, get into my shoes. You know? <laughs> Walk in my moccasins for a day. <laughs> my luxury moccasins that cost 3K. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit okay <laughs> oh damn all right getting your butthole spray is really great it really <laughs> is it's really nice we need a good bidet sponsor that yeah, like you know like i think bidet sponsor hit us up mark bell is dumb as fuck oh what else on. would you expect from him his powerlifting videos are great that's about it from jovan oh. Lazarevsky. Hey, he threw in a compliment. <laughs> yeah, your powerlifting videos are great, but yeah. you're dumb as fuck. Oh, man. I, you know what? I don't know. I think I've had some good ideas. I haven't made all of my ideas. He hasn't seen everything, so. Mm. I mean, I do, I am, I've been working on it for a long time, but I'm working on a clear toilet that yeah. I'm working on with John Cena, and like, I don't know, we'll see what comes of it, but. Ooh, a clear it, toilet, like see-through? Yeah, it's going to be see, yeah, it's see-through. We, we've had this idea for like 25 years, 30 years. Oh, shit. Just hasn't come to fruition. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of paperwork, a lot of lo- attorneys and st- a lot of litigious stuff that we're working, you know, we got to work through. Please can't add, wait for that. Please add a scale on that. And the, uh, you know, the, so the, the, the problem of the hiccup that we've been running into <laughs> is that the floor kind of needs to be clear too. Cause like you want to see it like leave, you know? So That's it's like, true. how do we get people with clear floors? I mean, I don't know. We ran into a lot of hurdles. I think you'd have a, just a very specific market mm-hmm. of people, like wealthy people who'd <laughs> yeah. be like, that's something I need in my home to flex on all these poor individuals. There were some other features on it that I think are unique. Like it would take a picture of you. And it would post it to Instagram or, or social media, like Ooh. picture of your face, not your whole body. That'd be disgusting. But when you're, you know, at full tilt on yeah. there and you, <laughs> you're, give, you're giving it hell, you know, it's going to uh-huh. snap a picture for you. I like that. I like that a lot. You know what? You know what would be actually, and by the way, I forgot to give a compliment to my friend, Javon. You have a great head of hair. Just saying. Oh, dude. great head of hair. Yeah, that's I'm bald nice. as shit, so I'm jealous. Those um, are like that's those are like locks, like flowing locks, kind of right. It's pretty thick. My boy is rocking that. <laughs> Baby, you look good. Give me a call. Damn. All right, next tweet. Next to tweet. Should put a fan up to that hair. Say hello to me at OK But Still. I think I hate Mark Bell the most out of all YouTube fitness. He doesn't get enough shit for being a boring. Idiot. Oh. IMO, in my opinion. Man. Oh my God. Well, Mark. I actually do kind of think that I'm boring. Like, I wouldn't want to hang out with me. 
I don't say. I mean, I talk all the time on here, and I talk around you guys, but like. But then once we're done, you just walk away and don't even say bye. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, I'm done with you guys. I'm done, yeah. I'm just done. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode, but outside of that, we're not friends. (laughs) That's right, see? That's the shit that you do. I don't have any friends. So this guy's got a good point. At least your family tolerates you. The only people that are my quote-unquote friends are people that I pay. (laughs) So it's kind of (laughs) weird. I'm in a... I'm in a... I'm in a weird bubble over here. I don't know. I need to see a psychiatrist. Oh, my God. And a proctologist. Becky. Bamf Becky. You got good arms, Becky. Mark Bell sounds like a fucking idiot every time he opens his mouth. Oh, man. I just need to say this in the tonality of which I they're wonder, trying to put it across. Yeah, so you I'm understand. Really sure. And Seema's having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Should I change what I'm doing? I don't know. Man, I don't Some know. Some people like it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. I no, I, I think no, I think you I think you've garnered a lot of people who love it. You know? That that there's some people like Bamf Becky, she's a badass motherfucker. I had Becky. a guy in here the other day with his son and, and this kid ended up deadlifting four oh five. It was pretty cool. Was How like, old was he? He's like sixteen year old kid. I wasn't was, even deadlifting that. I, I know. wasn't even deadlifting. Yeah, he was he was a beast. But Damn. they said their favorite thing is when I say, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, the reason why I do that is because people keep talking about how annoying it is. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm leaning into it. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. From John Doe, Le Tweet Monster. Mm. You look amazing, but you got to agree, the roids are helping a lot too. Keep up mm. the great work. Hope everything is all right in the long run. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, he, he, roids are great, bro. Get on them. Ah. <laughs> Well, I'm talking to John Doe. He's You're talking already, to John Doe. He's already like missing or dead, right? I must <laughs> I must add to this. I have nothing to do with what he just said. Dude, by the way, what a great picture he has. He looks great. Hey, what, what's that? Was that Sully? Mike Sully. Sully. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sully. Yep. Sully. Yeah. I That's an amazing love that movie. movie. It, Monsters, Monsters, Inc. Yep. Uh, from Darren Layton. <laughs> Deleted you off Insta. Deleting here. V soon, your podcast will be period. Boring, shitiness stuff. Mm. Why do people use shite instead of shit? Like, I mean, is that a UK thing? I think I've heard people in the UK say shite. Hey, the guy looks like he's in pretty good shape. He's jacked. Yeah. Hey, he had a little necklace on? Look like he's like too styling. I wonder why people get so mad. Mm. Like, why do they get so upset? Like, he's sitting on his, let's just walk through this for a moment, right? Like, he's, He's at his keyboard. He just whacked off for like the third time. And he busted. Fucking loser. He busted a nut to the tranny train, which, you know, we all do, right? He, <laughs> he was going down the rabbit hole. Bleep that. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta bleep that shit. We gotta bleep that shit. Un- unedited. We're going for it. This one. I'm just, I'm talking about Darren Layton's experience <laughs> of him being on the porn, all the porn sites. Oh my God. Yeah. But he's sitting there getting frustrated. Nothing can get him off, right? Uh-huh. He finally finds something wonderful that he can get off to. Yeah. This train of folks uh, <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing, doing whatever it is that they're doing, right? <laughs> and, then, and then he's like sad because he's got a little bit of jizz on his belly. Oh, yeah. The jizz on the belly is never And he's good. like, he's disgusted with himself. He's yeah. like, I'm, fuck, God damn, I was supposed to go lift. I was supposed to go do this and that, right? And he's thinking about like a protein shake or something, but he's like, fuck all that. He's just farting around on the internet. Got some dusty Cheetos. Eat some yeah. Cheeto fingers. Yeah, that were that yeah, that were there from last night, mm. right? And then he just he's looking at shit and my ass comes across the screen and then, all then he's just all and handsome. Yeah, he's all sad. <laughs> Deleted you off Insta, deleting you here. You know? And, he can't handle it, man. Yeah, I don't know. But he's jacked, man. Darren, why are you doing that? You're so jacked. Hey, and Next time, Darren, don't make comments after you blow your load. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he probably had cum brain or post-nut brain. Post-nut mm-hmm. brain is very depressing. Yeah, you're not going to make good decisions. You're not going to say anything good at that time either. Never. Never. Probably going to be hurtful. Yes. Yeah, so Dude, you look great in that shirt. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is a very nice shirt. But you know what? I didn't even realize my shirt matches my kicks. What? <laughs> Whoa. Hey, now. This is our famous uh, World Carnivore shirt that we do every year. Got to give a shout out to uh, Sean Baker for starting World Carnivore Month. We really appreciate it. And uh, hey, if you're down with carnivore stuff, you can grab this shirt. It's at markbellslingshot.com. All right. 
Andrew, want to take us on out, baby? Oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's uh, episode. Uh, if you guys have comments of your own that you want to drop down in the uh, comment section below that we could read on a future... Roast the fuck out of us. <laughs> we love it. Hey, I want your meanest, most disgusting, most vile from the crack of your asshole shit <laughs> to come onto this comment section because I'm ready, baby. We're ready. <laughs> All right. So make sure you guys don't miss out on that opportunity. Subscribe and hit that bell notification. So that way you can make sure to see that. And please follow the podcast at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. My Instagram and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z and Seema. If people want to hate on you, where can they go? <laughs> and Seema Yin Yang on Instagram and YouTube. And Seema Yin Yang on TikTok and Twitter, Mark. I'm Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weak this week. This is never strength. Catch y'all later. Bye.